you started, my soul went on fire. I lost my mind in a wild three leagues off when I left him. How many men have you lost in this action? But few of any sort, and none of name. Oh, a victory is twice itself when the achiever brings home full numbers. I find here in this letter also that Don Pedro has bestowed much honor on a young Florentine called Claudio. Much deserved on his part and equally remembered by Don Pedro, he hath borne himself beyond the promise of his age, doing in the figure of a lamb feats of a lion. He hath better bettered expectation than you must expect of me to tell you how. I pray you, is Signor Mountanto returned from the wars or no? I know none of that name, lady. There is none such in the army of any sort. What is he that you ask for, niece? My cousin means Signor Benedict of Padua. Oh. He's returned, and as pleasant as ever he was. I pray you, how many hath he killed and eaten in these wars? <laughs> but how many hath he killed? For indeed, I promise to eat all of his killing. Faith, niece, you tax Senior Benedict too much. He'll meet with you, I doubt it not. He hath done good service, lady, in these wars. You have rusty victual, and he hath hoped to eat it. He is a very valiant trencherman. He hath an excellent stomach. And a good soldier, too, lady. And a good soldier, too, lady. But what is he to a lord? A lord to a lord, a man to a man, stuffed with all honorable virtues. It is so, indeed. He is no less than a stuffed man. But <laughs> as for the stuffing, well, we are all mortal. Uh, sir. You must not mistake my niece. You see, there is a kind of merry war betwixt her and Signor Benedict. They never meet, but there is a skirmish of wit between them. He gets nothing by that. In our last conflict, four of his five wits went halting off, and now is the whole man governed with one. So that if he has wit enough to keep himself warm, let him bear it for a difference between himself and his horse. For it is all the wealth that he has left to be known a reasonable creature. Who is his companion now? He has every month a new sworn brother. Is it possible? Very easily possible. He wears his face but as the fashion of his hat. It ever changes with the next block. Well, he is much in the service of the right noble Claudio. Oh, Lord! He will hang upon him like a disease. He is sooner caught than the pestilence, and the taker runs presently mad. God help the noble Claudio. If he have caught the Benedict, it will cost him a thousand pound hair be cured. I will hold friends with you, lady. Do, good friend. You will never run mad, niece. No, not till the hot January. Don Pedro is approached. <gasps> your charge too willingly. I think this is your daughter. Her father hath many times told me so. <laughs> Were you in doubt, ma'am, that you asked him? Signor Benedict. No, but then were you a child? You have it full, Benedict. We may guess by this what you are, being a man. Truly, the lady mothers herself. Be happy, lady, for you are like an honorable mother. Signor Leonata be her mother, she would not have her head on her shoulders for all Messina, as unlike her as she is. I wonder that you will still be talking, Signor Benedict. Nobody mocks you. What, my dear lady disdained? Are you yet living? <laughs> is it possible that the stain should die while she hath such a mean food to feed it as Signor Benedict? 
courtesy itself must convert to disdain if you come in her presence. Then is courtesy a turncoat? For truly I am loved of all the ladies. <laughs> <laughs> Only you accept it. And I would, I could find in my heart that I had not a hard heart. For truly, I love none. A dear happiness to women. They would else be troubled with a pernicious suitor. I thank God in my cold blood that I am of your humor for that. I'd rather hear my dog bark at a crow than a man swears he loves me. God keep your ladyship in that mind so some gentleman or other shall skip the predestined scratch face. <laughs> Scratching could not make it worse, and for a face as yours were. <laughs> well, you are a rare pair of teacher. A bird of my tongue is better than a beast of yours. I would my horse have the speed of your tongue, and such good continuer. <laughs> but keep your way. In God's name, I have done. You always end with the jade's trick. I know you of old. That is the sum of all, Leonata. Signor Claudio and Signor Benedict, my dear friend Leonata, invited you all. I tell her we shall stay here at least a month. She hardly prays that some occasion or other may detain us longer. I dare swear she is no hypocrite, but prays this from her heart. If you swear, my lord, you shall not be forsworn. Ah. Let me bid you welcome, my lord. Being reconciled to the prince, your brother, I owe you all duty! <laughs> I thank you. I am not of many words, but I thank you. <laughs> Please, it's your grace, Leon. Your hand, Leonata. We will go together. My simple true judgment? Or would you have to have me speak after my custom as professed tyrant to their sex? Nay, I pray thee speak in sober judgment. Why? Methinks me she's too low for a high praise, too brown for a fair praise, and too little for a great praise. Only this commendation I can afford her. Were she any other than as she is, she were unhandsome. And being no other than as she is, I do not like her. Thinkest I am in sport, but I pray thee, tell me truly how thou likest her. Would you buy her that you inquire after her? The world buys to jewel. Yea, in a case to put it in. But speak you this with a sad brow, or do you play the flouting jack that tells Cupid is a good hair finder, and Vulcan a rare carpenter? Come, in what key shall a man take you? To go into song. In mine eye, she's the sweetest lady that ever I looked on. <laughs> I can see yet without spectacles, and I saw no such matter. <laughs> her cousin, were she not possessed with the fury, exceeds her in beauty as much as the first of May doth the last of December. But you have no intent to turn husband, have you? I would scarce trust myself. Though, I had sworn the contrary, if Fira would be my wife. It's come to this. Shall I never see a bachelor of three score again? Go to, in faith, that will need thrust thy neck onto the yoke, wear the print of it, and sigh away Sundays. Look, Don Pedro returns to seek you. What secret held you here, that you followed not to Leonatus? He is in love. With who? Now this is your grace's part. Mark how short his answer is. <laughs> With Hero, Leonata's short daughter. Think <laughs> men if you love her, for the lady is very well worthy. Speak this to fetch me in, my lord. By my troth, I speak my thought. And in faith, my lord, I spoke mine. And by my two faiths and troths, my lord, spoke mine. 
And I love her, I feel. She is worthy, I know. That I neither fear how she should be loved, nor know how she should be worthy, is the opinion that fire cannot melt out of me. I will die in it at the stake. I was ever an obstinate heretic in the despite of beauty. And you can never maintain the part but in the force of his will. That a woman conceived me, I thank her. That she brought me up, I likewise give her the most humble thanks. But that I will have the reach it winded on my forehead, or hang my bugle in the invisible baldric, all women shall pardon me. For I will not do them the wrong to mistrust any. I will do myself the right to trust none. And the fine is for which I may go finer. I will die a bachelor. I shall see thee ere I die. Look pale with love. <laughs> with anger, sickness, or hunger, my lord. Not with love. <laughs> with ere the sensible Benedict bear, let it be vilely painted in such great words as they write, here is a good force to hire. Let them signify under my sign, here you may see Benedict, a married man. Will you temporize with the hours? In the meantime, good Signor Benedict, prepare to Leonidas. Command me to her, tell her I will not fail for at supper, for indeed she hath made great preparation. Dost thou affect her, Claudio? Oh, my lord, when you went onward on this end of action, I looked on her with a soldier's eyes, liked, but at a rougher task than drive liking to the name of love. But now I am returned, and all thoughts of war have left their places vacant. And in their rooms come thronging forth soft and delicate desires, the whole prompting me our fair young hero is saying, I liked her ere I went to wars. I shall be like a lover presently. <laughs> Tire the hero with a book of words. Thou dost love their hero, cherish it. Look, what will service fit? Because once thou lovest it, I will with thee with the remedy. I know we will have revelry tonight. I will assume thy part in some disguise, and tell fair hero that I am Claudio. In her bosom will I enclasp my heart, and take her hearing prisoner with the force and strong encounter of my amorous tale. After to her mother will I break, and the conclusion is she shall be thine. In practice, let us put it presently. <laughs> There is no measure to the occasion that breeds, therefore the sadness is without a limit. You should hear reason. And when I have heard it, what blessing brings it? If not a present remedy, at least a patient sufferance. I wonder that thou, being as thou sayst thou art, born under Saturn, goest about to apply a moral medicine to a mortifying mischief. I cannot hide what I am. I must be sad when I have cause and smile at no man's jests. Eat when I have stomach, and wait on no man's leisure. Sleep when I am drowsy, and tend on no man's business. Laugh when I am merry, and claw no man in his humor. Yea, but you must not make foolish of it till you can do it without controlment. You have blazed it out against your brother, and he hath turned you newly into his grace. Where it is impossible to take a true root by the fair weather that you make, it is needful that you frame the season for your own harvest. I had rather be a caker in a hedge than a rose in his grace. And it better fits my blood to be disdained of all than to fashion a carriage to steal love from any. In this, though I cannot be said to be a flattering, honest man, <laughs> It must not be denied, but I am a plain-dealing villain. If I had my mouth, I would bite. If I had my liberty, I would do my liking. In the meantime, let me be that I am, and seek not to alter me. Can you make no use of your discontent? I make all use of it, for I use it only. Who comes here? Ah, what news, Baraccio? I come from a great supper, my lord. The prince, your brother, is royally entertained by Leonata, and I have news of an attended marriage. Mm -hmm. Will it serve as any model to build mischief on? Pray, what is he for a fool that betrothes himself to unquietness? 
married his brother's own right hand. Who? The most exquisite Claudio. Even the uh, proper squire. And who? And who? Which way looks he? <laughs> Mary, on hero, the daughter and heir to Leonata. A very forward march chick. <laughs> How came you to this? Being entertained for a perfumer as I was smoking the musty room, comes to me, Prince and Claudio, hand in hand in sad conference. I whipped me behind the rest and heard it spoken upon that the prince, having wooed hero for himself, would then give her to Count Claudio. Come, come, let us thither. This may prove food to my displeasure. That young startup hath all the glory of my overthrow. If I can cross him any way, I bless myself every way. You are both sure and insist me. To the death, my lord. Let us to the great supper. Their cheers are greater that I am subdued. Would the cook were of my mind? Shall we go prove what is to be done? We'll wait upon your lordship. Uh, uh, uh.